Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is Ashley Fields with Yard Art R Us, and we are going to be doing our Happy Halloween totem pole today. So let me bring one over of what our finished product is going to look like. I'm going to get this um, pulled up on my end and make sure I get it shared everywhere I need to have it shared. And then we will hop in and get started. So as you hop in, if you don't mind, say hello. Let me know where you're from. I love getting to chit chat with you guys. Let me see, get this shared, shared. Okay, there we go. Hello, Debbie. So good to see you. Hi, Patty, hi, Shirley. How are you ladies doing? All right, y'all, so there. this is where we're working towards today uh, with our blank that we have. I painted this guy last week, so he definitely needs to get Windexed um, for us around here. I honestly have to Windex if it's even been two hours since I painted it. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just my workshop and all the dust in my workshop, uh, but the paint does separate on me quite a bit if I don't keep it Windexed and get my surface really clean. So I'm just using a rag and plain old Windex cleaning this down. Uh, there we go. We'll make it work. Alrighty, y'all. So, hi, Jane. Hi, Bridget. How are you guys? She said, looks adorable. Shirley says, hello, hello, my friends. Y'all, I intended to go live on this, like, last week, and it didn't happen. My apologies. I tried to go live earlier, but I ended up taking a nap. <laughs> Sometimes we just need those naps. And, um... I woke up to it pouring, pouring rain, which I absolutely love. So it's actually still raining right now. I'm just kind of hoping that we just, at least if we can keep the power on and keep the Wi-Fi going, then we'll be good. All right, so we're, I'm going to actually get started by filling in my words. I have Happy and Halloween. I want to do that because once I get the shading and the outlining, I don't want to have to reach over wet paint. So I wanted to just show you guys, a, I have a color wheel that I purchased. And so what I kind of did to determine the colors that I was going to use for my wording, I actually turned to my color wheel. So now I gotta see which side I'm supposed to be using. Oh well, yeah, it could be used. No, I think it's this side. So when it comes to like my um, purple, I kind of come and find like the closest purple, right? And then I go direct opposite. And as you can see, direct opposite is gonna be yellows. So here's about that purple I'm using. So I would come over here to find that perfect contrast and it's gonna be yellow. So I end up using light yellow over here on that purple. And I simply made that choice by looking at my color wheel. Now on my teal, I'm gonna do the same thing. This thing kind of spins around. I go to find my you know, the closest teal I can find. I'm going to say that's about a blue green. Um, and I kind of just go really directly across and I have some oranges. So then I'm going to try to use an orange up here uh, <coughs> so that we could just get the best contrast. So I don't know about y'all, but for me, half the time when I am trying to pick, in this case, I wanted this guy to be really um, colorful. But then when I'm trying to pick colors, you know, half the time I'll put a color down and I'm like, oh, I don't like that. And so I've been finding it more helpful for me to just kind of check that color wheel, see what the perfect contrast color already is, and just go with that. And a lot of times I love the turnout that I get from that when I actually look at the color wheel and don't just go off the top of my head. Shirley says, well, a nap sounds good. Yes, girl, I ate lunch. And then, you know, my eyelids just couldn't stay open and <laughs> I just fell asleep. Oh, it happened. I've got a million things I need to be doing, but the nap just felt good, y'all. I, I can't seem to go very many days now without having a nap. And so I just, I'm, I'm tired. And you know, all those naps I wanted to skip as a child, I guess I'm making up for those now as an adult. All right. So I'm just using light yellow. This color is in our color palette as uh, the base color right here is just our light purple. And this color that I'm adding on is just simply uh, light yellow. So I'm just using a script liner brush. This is a number four royal gold script liner. And I really just kind of, I have this paint watered down a little bit. I always water it down if I'm going to be using it on a, um, 
shading brush or a scrib lining brush and that's just so that I can get that paint to be a little bit more pliable so that basically when I set that brush down it'll go into those grooves really easily for me. I, for me, whenever that paint is too thick, I just can't really get it to flow the way I'm looking for it to flow. And it just kind of almost makes my job a little bit harder. So adding water is almost just natural. If y'all couldn't notice, I just started doing it and it wasn't even explaining what I was doing because I almost just don't even think about it nowadays. So I just added a touch of water. And at this point, I'm, I'm literally setting that brush down, y'all, and these all these lines are etched on here for me and I kind of just pull that paintbrush through those lines. So, uh, let's see, I see a lot of you. Hi, Letitia, how are you, my dear? She says, oh, so cute, thank you. Hey, Carolyn, Karen, so glad y'all are here, zigzag. What's everybody up to this Thursday? I thought today was Friday, y'all, and apparently it's not, it's Thursday. I can't seem to keep my days straight which is, I'm kind of glad it's Thursday because I, I do have a lot of work to do. But, you know, priorities, I guess, have been <laughs> napping instead of working. Oops. It happens. So this is actually um, all of the Halloween, fall Halloween pieces that we have released thus far, um, at least the ones that I have released, because Mary and I do split the patterns. Um, this is actually my last tutorial. So all the ones, all the uh, blanks that we have released so far, we already have tutorials on. Now, next month we are just gonna be bringing in two new blanks. And both of those blanks tutorials will be in the um, Academy. And I wanna say it's two different turkeys, if I'm not mistaken. I know the one I'm doing is a turkey. So I've got uh, a lot of blanks that we are sold out of right now that I'm going to be getting cut and hopefully brought back to the store on Sunday. And Debbie says, last day of the month. I know, y'all. How did October get here already? What happened to 2021? Looks like this year just flew by. And I apologize. I know this takes me a little bit longer. Anytime I'm doing words, it's just kind of slow. So y'all bear with me. I will pick up speed soon as I finish. Words do take a little longer. So a lot of times, honestly, I try to do some of the words before my lives. Uh, just that way, you know, it's not so long. Uh, but I kind of like looked at this and I was like, oops, I didn't do any words. And so I was already ready to go live. I just thought, okay, well, we're going to paint today or paint the words together today. So yes, last day of September. This is crazy. I um, am so behind on all of my Christmas stuff, y'all. And I'm hearing this year that um, Christmas, like if you have little kids and shopping for toys and stuff, that because of all the supply chains getting messed up, that it might be a lot harder to find, you know, the Christmas toys and stuff this year, which is kind of crazy. But um, I know I told you guys last week when I was live that we are actually doing a Disney trip for Christmas this year. So we are skipping from the presents and doing memories instead. So we uh, just bought all of our Disney tickets last week. We are really looking forward to that. So my, uh, my daughter's birthday is December 23rd. And so that's going to be the first day that we're at a park is December 23rd. And then we'll be there the 24th and the 25th. It's going to be so fun. I cannot wait. But those of you with youngins, apparently y'all need to start shopping now for any must-have toys that are on the list. Okay, so we got Halloween done. Let's wash out that brush. And I don't know why. I, every now and again I see it flash across. It says live video interrupted. And I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, Debbie, we are driving. We are driving. Uh, we lived in Colorado for, let me grab the orange on here, y'all. We lived in Colorado for, oh, I don't know, what, let's say about two years. I want to say it was like 2016 to 18 or 17 to 19, something like that. I can't recall. But anyways, uh, so when we lived in Colorado, we drove to Houston. Um, six times a year 
and we would drive straight through from Colorado all the way to Houston. So we would like leave on, you know, a Thursday evening at like five o'clock, and then we would get to Houston at about 8 a.m. I don't remember what exact time uh, on Friday. And then we would go unload at the store and end up driving back home Sunday. And so for us, we got so used to long distance road trips that anything shorter than 16 hours is totally doable for Zach and I. Um, anything longer than 16 hours, we're like, I don't think so. I think that might be a, a you know, a flyable trip, but for us, it's like this trip is, I think we looked it up. It's 13 and a half hours from our house. We're like, yeah, that's no big deal. We can do that in a day. So we did decide to drive. Plus, I want to get out. I want to see stuff. I've been, I feel like I've been so cooped up in my house for, I don't know y'all. It feels like definitely over a year. We were supposed to go to Jamaica last summer and then that got canceled because of COVID. And so we really just haven't gone very far, you know? I think the furthest, where's the furthest we've even been in this whole time? Um, El Campo, <laughs> which is like two hours away. So we are definitely looking forward to a trip. We're looking forward to just memories that don't have anything to do with just presence, you know? And uh, my parents, Mary and my dad, Bruce, they're gonna come with us. So we are super excited. It's gonna be so fun. So, hey Kim, how are you? Hi Mary Catherine. All right y'all, I'm just jibber jabbering if we couldn't tell. I'm getting these letters filled in. And if y'all can't tell, I'm just moving slow today. Uh, getting these letters filled in so that I can start shading and outlining and getting those highlights on here, which is gonna be a lot faster than the time it does take me to do letters. Letters always just take me a little bit more time. So I've got to slow down. You know, I've, I've got to, I don't have to be perfect and precise, but it does have to be a little bit uh, inside the lines, if you will, or close to the lines. So I do kind of have to slow down. Can't really move as fast. If I was somebody who could hand letter, which I really need to work on that, I would just take the words completely off and just hand letter, because that could be faster. Um, but I don't quite have that skill down. So therefore, I have the words etched and I just fill them in. Okay. I don't know if y'all could tell, but I love this purple, I mean this purple, I'm gonna say, uh, this orange on this uh, teal. It just really kind of, it pops. Again, I, I, those of you that might not have been here earlier when we first caught on, the whole way I chose these colors that I added onto my lettering is I used the color wheel and just use that to find the contrasting color. So ta-da, happy Halloween. And this orange, I used asterisk orange on my happy. The reason I used asterisk orange is because I have light orange down here, which I'm gonna shade with shading orange. So I'll end up kind of having three different variations of orange on here. Uh, Mary Catherine says, was this your design? Yes, ma'am, it is. We do have we do have the template available. I posted the link for the blank and the template um, in the description of this video. So if you're looking for either of those. Sorry, y'all, my dogs. Uh, this is a Yard Art RS pattern. So, okay, let's get started with shading. I am going to first get my shading yellow. I always kind of start with those lighter colors. This is really separated, so I'm going to get that mixed. And y'all, I also, if somebody can remind me at the end of this video, hopefully I can get done before four because that's what time my daughter gets home. Uh, but I have a bunch of new paintbrushes and uh, I'll show you guys what I have because I do have some new paintbrushes that we've never had before. Now, they're not at the store yet and I'm using a number 12 shader and this is shading yellow. 
They're not at the store yet, but I'm hoping to have them at the store on Sunday. I've got, a, I've still got to cut a lot of blanks. We are out of Halloween trains and, oh, what else are we out of? Um, the Merry Christmas trucks and I can't even thank y'all. I know I have, a, I have a list of 10 different sheets of blanks that I've got to get cut. There's a new turkey that we're going to be releasing um, for uh, Yardard Academy in October, so i got to get that one cut. What else is there? I don't know. Basically, anything that we are out of, I am going to try to get some more cut if they are newer patterns that we've released this year. So I will be bringing paintbrushes and more blanks, hopefully, on Sunday if I can get my act together, y'all. Okay, I just did a little bit of shading yellow on the light yellow parts. I'm now going to wash out this brush, and we're just going to continue on getting everything shaded, and then we'll move right into highlighting. Clean that brush back out. Now, I'm going to, uh, we'll work on our sign and, and uh, Frankenstein for a minute. I want to try to let some of that yellow dry before we do our orange. So maybe let's do some Frankenstein. So I used a lime green on my base. So I'm pairing that with the dark green. Lately, I've been lightening my dark green with a little bit of lime green. So it's just not as dark. And that is what I'm gonna be using today. So just a, lightened up just a little bit. Getting that mixed. Y'all can't tell. All my paints are separated because I've not been painting very much. I was sick and in bed for weeks and then now it's just kind of trying to get better I'm trying to get uh, back to normal which I don't know what normal is anymore y'all I guess it's like after COVID the um, the exhaustion is just so real and then my body's not quite been my body for a little while now so there's that too I just come across right here I'm going to just give them a couple of uh, kind of like forehead lines. And then come right here on the nose and just kind of, notice I'm not even adding more paint. I'm just kind of following along on some of those lines. I'm not going to add any here, here, or here just because it'll get too thick. And I'll just do that with my black. So add just a little bit on that Frankenstein space, wash our brush out, and just keep on going. We need to add some shading onto the purple. We need some shading onto the teal, and then we need some on our orange pumpkin. After that, we could start blow drying and get on with the outlining and highlighting. Okay, so on this light purple, I pair that with a shading purple, which is just a darker purple. Get this again mixed, because all these need to be mixed. Because they're all separated. I think black is the only color I have that does not separate. All other colors that I do have do separate, so. Always just gotta get them mixed up. Now I do have to be kind of careful not to drag this purple into my letters. Especially when I start moving too fast. It is real easy to just get all willy-nilly with that paintbrush and make some oopsies. So from here, I'm just going to kind of take this brush and just add a couple little swoosh lines. See, I even pulled a little yellow in right there. Oh, well, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to mess with it too much. So, um, and Debbie says, did you see the new asterisk orange? It's a different shape. Debbie, that is correct. Um, the new asterisk orange is an ace paint. Um, the old asterisk orange came from Home Depot and half of the time when I go to Home Depot to get a gallon of paint it might take 30 minutes and then they try to argue with me that they don't have that color you know and then half the time the sheen is off and then it's really stringy and so I just me being honest I'm not the biggest fan of having to get paint mixed at Home Depot and so I finally said I'm done that's the only color I get from Home Depot. So I went to Ace and picked out as similar of a color as I could find at Ace. And that is the new Asterisk Orange. Now, the good part about switching that Asterisk Orange brand, Debbie, is that it is going to be the same kind of paint that we are all used to using. And so it's not as stringy and gooey and thin. 
it's a lot more along the lines of all the other paints. So yeah, the shade's a little bit off, but being completely honest with you, the shade's always off when I got it at Home Depot. So I'd go and tell them, hey, I need this color. Oh, we don't have that color. And I'm like, yes, you do. And they're like, no, we don't. And I'm like, okay, let me give you the lid. I borrowed them a lid that has the barcode on it. Oh, no, we don't carry that color anymore. And I'm like, oh my gosh, y'all. And then, you know, the next time I go, I'd be like, okay, hey, I need this color. And they're like, okay, sure, no problem. And I'm like, what? I don't understand. <laughs> Uh, but Ace, we have a relationship with them. And so I literally send an email. I don't even go to the store. I send an email. And, and I just say, I need this, I need, here's my paint order. And I'll send, sometimes it's an email, you know, with 15 gallons, sometimes it's 30 gallons. And so I send my email. I'm like, hey, got a paint order for you. And he's like, okay, no problem. You know, we'll let you know when it's done. And then I'll get a call within about 48 hours. And then hey, your paint order's ready to pick up. I'm like, heck yes. So y'all tell me uh, what you think about that. But for me, it's, it's just so much easier to go through Ace. We love Ace. They've been, um, we've been dealing or doing business with them for, I don't know, 20 plus years. So it's almost like dealing with family. It's so much easier. And then if you go into like the big box stores where we don't have relationships with the workers, you just don't get the same... They don't take care of you the same, you know? So Debbie said, that's great. I just added a little red. There you go. Perfect. You know, and Debbie, if that's a color, I'll look and see, because I know I just put that one in stock. If that's a color that people are like, hey, it's not the right shade. I don't quite like it. I can always kind of change that formula up a little bit. I thought it was, as, it was pretty close, uh, but I know it's not the exact. So y'all on that teal, I just shaded that, and I'm using the same exact brush the entire time. I've simply washed the same brush out. But on that teal, I use what I refer to as shading teal. It's just teal mixed with a couple of drops of black. So now we're gonna go to shading orange. So this is really our third orange. You have asterisk orange on happy. The base of your pumpkin is done in light orange. And then we're pairing that light orange with shading orange. I think that's what makes this guy look so good uh, when you get done is it just has a lot of colors going on. Adding a little bit of water to this because it's kind of thick. I need it watered down so I can get some fluid lines, which is what I like. I love the fluid lines, so. Okay, again, just dipping that corner. Y'all, every single time, I know I don't show this every time, but I'm, I just start with a little bit on that corner. I don't have, I cannot seem to get this in the light, but I don't have my entire brush filled with that paint. I'm gonna just kind of get started following these lines. In fact, I actually need to come in here on the center and do these first before I start doing the outward signs. Pick up just a dab. I'm gonna just kind of keep these on the thinner side. So anytime I'm doing a jack-o'-lantern, I always do the inside of the mouth and then I also come around on the outside of like the mouth, eyes, nose, whatever your carving is, because you just kind of want that to pop a little bit. Notice I'm not trying to use too much paint. I'm really just kind of letting that fade in and out. Bust over that line. Oopsies. Okay. I'm going to come back and make that a little bit wider because it looked just a little too narrow for me. And then right here. that were there and then I'm just simply going to use that paint that's left over in my brush and just kind of add in a couple I would just call them little swish marks here and there I don't want to add too much it's a small piece the bigger the piece the more I'll add so the smaller the piece I try to keep it a little bit more simple Debbie says I was in the middle of my leaves when I ran out oh, no. I'm sorry about that Debbie that is that is tough Whenever you run out and then we change the formula on you and then it's like, okay, that doesn't match. That does stink. My apologies, my dear. Okay. Shading is done. I mean, I could, let me, I can just add a tiny little touch of shading brown to the stem of my pumpkin. It's honestly, it's not even an inch tall. So it's kind of like, if you really don't do it, it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but why not? All these paints are separated. So I gotta, I've got like, I don't know, six or eight spoons over here with wet paint on them. Let's get that brown just 
mix back up. This is shading brown. So the light brown that you see is reindeer brown. And this brown that I'm getting just a touch of is uh, shading brown. So literally just boop, leave it. Now I can put that shader up. I'm done with the shading. Everything that's left is going to be outlining and highlighting. So let me get this plugged in. Got my blow dryer. There we go. I just need to get these edges dry. The words, I don't need the words to be dry, but I do need these edges dry so that I can outline. not using it it's like well, what do I do with that it's kind of just there all right I'm gonna grab my script liner and my black now last week I sent my husband to go pick up some black for me and I told him this just go get it off the shelf and he went and got a black mixed and I'm like that's not the right black so I'm curious if the black that I have in here is the old black or the new black I don't know so the black looks a little bit off on here. I might have to redo my bat, depending on if this is the right one. It's so hard to know if it's the right one. So basically, when I base coated this bat, I used my mop brush. And if you get up really close on here, you can tell, you know, I have to kind of clean those lines up, which is all I'm really doing right now, just cleaning these lines. But I don't know if up there y'all can, with the uh, with camera angle, if y'all can really see that the lines look a little jiggy jaggy over here. Hey dude, hey, I'm on a live. It's not the time to be squeaking toys. I know you're trying to find the squeaker in that toy. AC, hey, no sir. <laughs> Go outside. Uh, hi Donna. Donna says, curious if you have any smell from your paint. If you have any smell. Uh, I, don't, um, I can't smell currently. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're referring to. I had COVID a few weeks ago and I lost my smell. And I still don't have it back. So I don't smell my paints. And honestly, I... I've been um, painting full time as a job for six years now. So I can't smell the paint anyways. I'm just so used to. Sorry, y'all. Hopefully over there. I got my alarm going off because uh, my daughter will be home in about 20 minutes. So I always have my alarm going off so I can um, open my gates. So I guess I better hurry up because I got to put the dogs up and open the gates. Okay. Keep on moving. So we're really at the moment, obviously I'm just taking a little black, following my lines, getting a little bit of outlining on here. Nothing too crazy. My line's a little thick, but hey, that's okay. From here, I kind of come over to my hair. Uh-oh, it's already separating on my hair. Why do you do that to me, black? Well, it's like that old black that I'm using. I'm kind of almost glad that my husband got the wrong black because that old black, everything separates on it. 
in this new black, it doesn't. So I guess it's a good thing that my husband had a goof and brought the wrong one home. You see me. out that brush and try another one. Uh, I need to go grab, I've, I got 40 new script liners in the other day and I just have not, I haven't even pulled them out of the box yet. But I really need to start working on breaking in some new ones because all these ones that I have are turning into that V and fanning and just driving me absolutely nuts. And I really think, number one, I use them a lot, but number two, uh, which don't do this, I leave them in the water for far too long and they just sit there. And so then the bristles end up, you know, uh, bending. And it ain't nobody else's fault but mine, you know. And so sometimes I really just have to kind of go through and throw my brushes away because I don't do the best job of really taking care of them. Um, so take it from me, wash your brushes when you're done with them and lay them flat to dry. Once they dry, put them upside down somewhere. I put them, I keep them in cups. Um, but yeah, when you leave them in water, hmm, they end up bending. And then it ends up not looking so great whenever you're trying to, you know, get a certain stroke out of it. I did also, y'all, these designs. These are Yard Art RS exclusive designs right here, but our um, graphic designer, I, I got him to kind of create these for me. I showed him some photos of some other ones that I had seen, and I was like, hey, these are cute. I love these, um, you know, but obviously they're not our designs, and can you do something kind of, you know, in this form of a totem pole, but that's 100% ours. And so he sent me back these designs and I was like, oh, love it. So I actually messaged him yesterday and I was like, all right, we've all loved the Halloween totem poles. So can you create some Christmas totem poles for us? I have not heard back from him. He is a school teacher by day. So I'm sure I'll hear back from him maybe in the next week or so. And hopefully we will get some new Christmas totem poles. Uh, oh, okay, Donna says, my husband's complaining of the smell of the acrylics, but I don't smell it. Honestly, Donna, I think it's one of those things, once you work around something for so long, you really don't smell it. I don't smell the paint. But we have um, a pet snake that we have had, I don't, I don't know how long we've had her. She's a year old. Uh, but one day in the room that we had her in, the AC went out, and we found her, and she was in complete shock. And, like, she was hard as a rock, and... You know, obviously kind of freaked out, poor baby. And so we ended up, I told my husband, she needs to get put in my art room because I always have the AC on out here. So then when we brought her into my art room, I noticed she stayed under, she burrowed and stayed underneath the log and didn't come out. And I told, I told Zach, I said, I think she's, I think it's the smells. You know, I don't think she likes the smells in here, which who can blame her? Who, who wants to smell paint? You know, I don't smell it. But my assumption was that the snake was smelling it. And so then when we moved her, now she's in our office, in her house. And since we've moved her inside, she is like always out and about. You could walk in there. She never is burrowed. Well, she really only burrows, I guess, after she eats. And so I think that that does go to say that there is probably a smell in here. And I just don't smell it because I'm so used to it. I do know acrylics definitely have a, um, I think they have a little bit of a stronger smell than this exterior house paint. Okay, you know, we're, we're getting there. I feel like this, this thing's taking me forever today. So I'm going to bring this black in here and just kind of fill in. You don't even have to, but I'm going to. Just fill in those little pockets. Okay, uh, 
me, I'm gonna wash out my brush. Down here on my pumpkin, we are going to outline that with the shading orange, which is the same color that we used to shade the pumpkin with, excuse me, shade the pumpkin with. We're also gonna use it to outline the pumpkin with. Where is my cap? I don't know where my black cap is. Oh, hello, really, Ashley? It's right in front of me. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna go back to that shading orange. Since I use this and it's the right thickness for shading, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it to get it to the right thickness for outlining. Me personally, when I outline, I just like it watered down more. So get that mixed. And then just following these lines. Right now it doesn't look very dark. You probably can't really see it too well. Uh, but as it dries, it will dry in a little, like a darker tone that'll pop a little bit better. When it comes to jack-o'-lanterns, I don't want to go and add black to it because black's just too stark. So I like to outline with either shading orange or if you want something that's even a more of a pop, you can do red orange. Which red orange, all you need to do is if you have shading orange, add a couple of drops of red to it. You can make your own red orange. I'm coming here with my own. be kind of careful I do have this black is very wet which I just picked up some in my brush let me just pull it back out come up from the bottom over here so that when I get in that black I'll be done there we go okay now I'm gonna wash that brush out and we are going to add some highlights and then this guy will be done alrighty let me grab my white not even on my table right here. Grab my white. Let's get this guy finished because nothing is ever finished until you have your white. Again, when I'm doing highlights, just like when I'm doing outlining, anytime I'm using this script liner, I always have that paint pretty watered down for me. I just find that that works best. Now, if it's a brand new script liner, I can tell you I don't put as much water. If it's an older script liner, I definitely add a little bit more water. So, notice I kind of load, and then I come and I wipe off that paint on the sides. I offload. I don't want very much paint, okay? I want these lines to be on the wispier side. Nothing too crazy. I might come in here and just add a little, add a few little marks around, maybe come right here, something like this, maybe something like that. You always need that white, but you also are wanting it to be, you know, you want it to be subtle. You don't want it to be too stark. Come in over here and just add a little. I think I'll come in like this. Sit in on that side. Now, I do have wet paint here, um, so it would work a little bit better if my paint was dry, but I just like to bring in a little bit. I'm picking up black, so it's already turning gray. I like to almost bring in some little V's. But again, that black's wet. It doesn't look that great. So keep on moving. I'm going to come up here on my happy and just kind of notice, y'all, I'm not using pressure. Whenever I'm doing this, this is very light, kind of wispy lines. Um, I do need a little dot of black here, or a dot of black, a dot of white on the black, but that black is wet. A little touch. I'm gonna move it down. Now my bat has some eyes and a mouth that I just I don't worry about filling that in until I come in with the white and I just do it with my script liner. Now because this white is watered down, it doesn't cover black that well. So honestly, on these eyes, I might need to do two coats of white. But at least for now, we can get some kind of color brought in. Same thing on the mouth. Just kind of fill in those areas that are there. 
that are etched onto the pattern form. All right, now offload that brush. I'm gonna come in. Ah, that darn black, y'all, it's still wet. Let me clean that brush off. It, this would all be a lot easier if that colors were dry. But they're not. Now my brush is splitting. Hold on, let me wash the brush. That might help me a little. This is how it goes sometimes. You get to like the very last couple of minutes worth and then it all starts kind of falling apart on you. I just kind of like to do some light, wispy lines. However, I'm picking up a lot of black, so they might not look very great. Uh, now, on my bat, obviously he's, the eyes are really wet. I just painted those eyes. So we will do a, a black dot, but it needs to dry first. So let me just show you the completely finished. Oh, that's the only thing I need to add is some black dots. But let me bring in this completely finished one just so you guys can see. Now this one's obviously dry. I wanted to show you this too. Push it over. Notice this was a sample I did. Notice I did light purple here. And while I like light purple and teal together, it does not pop as as well as that asterisk orange does. I used my color wheel on this one to help me decide what colors to do. I think on this one I used my color wheel when I got to Halloween, but I had already done the happy. And so you can see that the contrast is just not as good. But let's go over these colors right quick. I'm gonna just move the wet one so I don't make any more boo-boos. Uh, I did start with two coats of plain white with a roller. I always do that. So colors like yellow, light orange, those colors will pop. They don't pop if you don't have a good coat of white underneath. So two coats of white with a roller from there. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. From there, I added light yellow on my moon and the inside of my jack-o'-lantern's um, eyes and mouth. I have teal on the base of my happy sign. I have lime green on the base of Frankenstein. These ears, or these ears, uh, the little screws I have done, I actually use silver on there, but you could use gray. On this sign, the base color is light purple. And then on your pumpkin, your base color is light orange. And then this tiny little stem up here is done with reindeer brown. From there, I shaded with dark green on my lime green, shading purple on my light purple. I call shading teal on my teal. Really, it's just teal mixed with a little bit of black. And then um, shading orange on my light orange. From there, we pretty much outlined everything with black with the exception of our pumpkin, which all we did was use some shading orange to outline that pumpkin. And then um, on my words, on the one we did today, we used light yellow on Halloween and on a happy, we used asterisk orange. So hopefully that helps and hopefully this can answer any questions, you, excuse me, that you guys might have. I appreciate y'all being here and hanging out. I was hoping I would have time to show y'all the new paint brushes, but I might try to come on either later today or tomorrow and show you those because my daughter should be home any minute and I need to go get ready for her. So you guys enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I will see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.